So, Ashiga Island and Resurgence have been in Warzone 2.0 for a day now, so how's it feeling? Today, I want to run down my thoughts, opinions, and critiques of the map for my initial play experience. As we go along, drop your thoughts below on what you like or dislike out of it, and make sure to check out my friends at G Fuel, where Code Espresso can get you 30% off your entire order on select items, including a few great flavors like Hype Sauce and Starfruit, but more on that later. For now, let's jump into my thoughts on Ashika Island. First and foremost, this review is subjective. If you feel differently, that's totally fine and entirely understandable. Additionally, this is an early initial review. My feelings could easily change in a week, two weeks, and so on. Beyond that, the final thing that I'll mention is that I know that there were, as of the last 24 hours, a ton of issues that people still had where they were crashing while trying to log into the game. There was issues where like reviving players would freeze you and you couldn't do anything and you just have to die and come back. So there's definitely some stuff here with this. A lot of that though actually was addressed as of recording this video. I had to go back and adjust this part here because there was an update that did fix that out and should hopefully now allow all players to jump in. I feel lucky that I really didn't have any issues here crashing in the first 24 hours or so, so I don't want to dismiss those early troubles, but I want to give my thoughts on the gameplay loop and the map itself here with this video. Let's start with the map itself here with this review, a brief rundown here of it. Honestly, I really enjoy the map itself. Visibility could be better, but for the most part, I found that I was spotting players. It's not something like there's dark corners every single engagement. There are still shadowy areas, but not as bad as like Superstore, Rose Skin, Inverdance, shadowy bad. The loot pool, rotations, parkour, and flank spots, there's plenty of stuff like that. There's a lot to dive into, lots of play spaces to play passively or to get in the mix and get aggressive with stuff. I feel like out of my couple dozens of matches, one of the things that my team kept gravitating towards was gunfights in that sort of greenhouse warehouse building of Ogoniku Farms, where there are multiple engagements where we just end up fighting like two, three, sometimes even four teams at a time that it was just everybody getting in the mix there. And it was just incredibly crazy. Again, very exciting gameplay in that sense, but also you could take it a bit more slow if you wanted to. And that kind of goes into the pacing discussion that I want to talk on. The big thing that I had here in terms of a concern for Resurgence within Warzone 2.0 was that obviously fundamentals of Warzone 2.0 were much different than Warzone 1. What we had, of course, with just the basics of movement in Warzone 1 are very much different from what we have in Warzone 2. So my thing was I was hoping that they wouldn't play too slow by comparison because at the end of Warzone 1, that's really all that Resurgence Resurgence was. Fortune's Keep, Rebirth Island, it was just movement metas galore, and it was a very, very fast-paced action. With Warzone 2 and taking out that base fundamental, I was a little skeptical. I kind of thought it'd be like a Rebirth Day 1 back in 2020, which I was pleasantly surprised that through my first hours of game time, like three, four, five hours of game time, I really didn't feel like it was all that slow. I had some bad starts to games, sure, but I'd say that probably half of my games, I was finishing up with 15 to 20 kills in that range, and when each match is only 10 minutes long around then with how the pacing flows and how zone pulls happen and everything, that's almost at every turn action. Not going a single minute without any engagement, that's really awesome, and I do enjoy that. So the pacing still feels there, even if you can't like break players' ankles with the movement meta that you'd have with slide canceling. So I was pleasantly surprised with that, and additionally, pleasantly surprised with the plating speed. I think that really helped contribute to it as well. It didn't feel like if you took a gunfight, which you'd be taking a lot most of the times, it didn't feel like you get stuck in the mud whenever you're trying to plate back up. Instead, you could have some movement in a sense to get away, just not straight up slide canceling. Though actually, plating is faster than regular sprinting, it seems like, so there's a bit of a plate movement mechanic to that. I don't think that you can quite abuse it, but when you can use it, it's definitely nice to get out of pinch situations. Also, very curious as to why we have the ability to sprint and plate when we were told specifically that we would not. I mean, I'm not complaining about it, don't get me wrong, but like that and a couple other things that I've noticed in the update already, which we'll talk about in our secret changes of season two video coming tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, not entirely sure when that will be. But there's a couple of things that I caught already that they told us in our dev call that are entirely different here when actually in the game. So that's one of those things that I didn't quite understand. But again, for this, not really too bothered by it. Now let's break down into some good and bad things in particular. Map and pacing out of the way. Some good things that I noticed firstly was that at least I thought so, cash was relatively abundant. I felt like I always had the ability to buy utility, whether that be armor, an armor box, ammo, a UAV if there was any in supply, and also the big thing, loadout drops. In quads, of course, it is something that it is $20,000 for your loadout drop, double what you'd be used to in Warzone 1, but it is something that I felt like whenever I was playing with a team, it was really easy to get. I would look down constantly and be like, oh, I did not realize I had $15,000 in my inventory, and then you can just easily pull with somebody else on your team. I think there were a couple of games where like by the end, we had no real use for additional plates, UAVs, there weren't really any in stock. So we'd end up finishing games with like 60, 70, $80,000 in our 
inventory. And so it feels like there's always that opportunity to get cash and help you out in your gameplay loop. And I am definitely not complaining about that. I really enjoyed that. AI, I love the fact that they're not in play just yet. That is something that we'll see these come in season, sure, but they detailed it was only going to be available in that in-world event, as well as the search and seizure contract that will be coming as well. But honestly, it's it's kind of sad how much more enjoyable it is with just a simple change like that, not adding in AI, and it was just player-to-player -player combat. I love that, and it felt... It felt like home. It felt like it was actually how it was supposed to be played, you know? So like going from what we knew with Almazra and all the AI around there and regular big map BR to this, it just felt more fluent in that gameplay structure. That's just me, but I really enjoy the fact that AI is not in the map just yet. Another thing that I really liked was that there's a lot of good parkour spots. I think that whenever we take a look at this map plus Fortune's Keep, another map created by High Moon Studio, that's one thing that I really enjoyed about Fortune's Keep as well, is that there was a good variation between points of interest, but also verticality that you yourself could scale. It's not like something where you had to have a drop-in mechanic and feature to get to certain points. You can scale the entire castle just by yourself. You don't need to drop in from the sky to get up there and hide. You can get up there and scout out the entire map at that point, plus a dozen other awesome locations like that. So really enjoy the parkour spots here within this map. One other thing that I really enjoyed was individual loadout drops. Again, this is one of those things that coming back to that, we were told one way and it happened the other. They said this wouldn't be a thing. We'll mention it again in our secret changes video coming at some point this weekend, but it's a change I wasn't expecting, though I'm here for it. I know our first game when we dropped in, we ended up killing a player or two off their loadout and I went over to try and grab it because I'm just like, okay, it's a natural world spawn like they are in Amazra, like we were told they would be in resurgence but then i just couldn't access it i'm like wait is is something wrong with this but i'm like oh our loadout's over there so that was something that caught me off guard but i do quite like it gives you a designated location and it breaks up the sort of chaos a little bit by not having like eight loadout drops drop all in one spot also, another nice benefit with loadout drops and the way that they work right now within Resurgence is that they work like they did in Warzone 1, but not how they did in Warzone 2 before this update. What I mean by that is that you can actually drop in and grab your loadout twice if the circumstances work out properly, i.e. you end up getting your loadout, you die quick, say somebody on your team doesn't pick up that loadout drop just yet, and the box is still there, you can respawn back down, grab your loadout again, and get right back into the action, getting those perks all over again, all within the span of like, 15 to 20 seconds. How do I know? Because, well, I did it. I got my loadout, died immediately, and came right back and was like, hey, my perks are back. Let's go. So that was a positive. I like that that is something here that we have the ability to do within Resurgence. The ground loot pool wasn't too bad. I felt like early game, there were definitely some decent weapons you could pick up and do well with, while also still having that RNG of sometimes you don't get the luck of the draw. Sometimes you get a weapon that isn't too favorable. Beyond that, I really enjoyed the restore honor feature. That was pretty cool to use, giving you additional cash as well as UAV pings to let you know of some of what's going on around you once per match that is available. So it's not something that can be abused. Used. And then finally, some cool things that are kind of corny are the tokens for the vending machines and the casinos here with that. That's like one of the Easter eggs. You can end up redeeming tokens for some loot that will spawn out of those vending machines and slot machines. And then one thing that I haven't quite figured out just how to do yet, because like I really didn't pay attention to it really, is we have like gift crates where it offered up some really good loot. We got like UAVs and a sort of kitted weapon out of that where it looked like just a regular weapon crate, but it had this sort of gift icon on it. So I don't know if that's for completing a contract just yet if that's something that's just a random world spawn but just know those are in there as well and they are beneficial but that said that's some stuff i enjoyed but what about stuff that i didn't obviously all those crashing issues in the first 24 hours obviously that freezing while reviving player bug but with those fixed out those are two things that we can hopefully now scratch off the list of things that absolutely sucked to have to deal with but one thing that I will say is that plates are better from where we were at launch. They released a little hotfix a couple of hours after the mode went live yesterday to increase the amount of plates around Ashika Island, plus guarantee one plate on death of the players that you end up killing. But I do think that they could be a bit more common still, especially if we're not going to see increases to the health. That, another sub point, I think that this map in Resurgence would be brilliant with another 50 HP base. 150 HP base, 150 through plates, like we had at the end of Warzone 1 for Resurgence in Rebirth, as well as Fortune's Keep, plus also in Caldera. I think that overall Warzone could benefit greatly from an additional 50 HP added across the board, but I don't know if we'll end up getting that. Fingers crossed that we do, but in the meantime, I'd still like to see plates a bit more abundant just because, again, you're going to shred through your enemies, and it is something that you're going to need to be plating up quite a bit. 
Bomb drones and the counter UAVs, not a fan of those at all. I encountered the bomb drones a couple of times, didn't die to them, so I wasn't really too tilted on that, but I just think they're kind of corny. Plus, whenever you end up using those, you end up getting the box icons of where players are, and that's something that you don't even have to see them. It just still showcases where they are, like it'll show even through walls. So that's something I'm not a huge fan of. Counter UAVs are just annoying because I feel like they're overabundant right now. I feel like anytime I take a step in a Sheikah Island on day one, at least, we ended up having our HUD scrambled. Not a fan of that. The zone pools, I definitely think, could be better. That's something I think will be worked out in time. Some of them were just really odd. Some were totally fine, but others, we had a couple of matches where the zone pulled into 100% water, which is like, that just becomes a stalemate at that point, unless you're fighting at service level where there's absolutely no cover whatsoever. So it becomes who can either like dive underneath and end up either knifing a player or shooting them with a pistol, or you're just kind of awkwardly hanging out being like, hey, what's up, guys? I know we're supposed to be fighting, but we're just in the water chilling. So that's something that I would like to see that worked out a little bit. Some nitpicky things, stuff that like isn't too detrimental, stuff that really isn't like game breaking, but annoys me is some of the new HUD elements were messed up in some capacity. This I think is likely an overall war zone thing, but I noticed it during my time in Ashika Island last night. But one thing that I noticed was when you buy an item from the buy station, it says special item purchased. So that's fine. But if you do that, every single item you buy ends up giving you that notification. And say if you spam buy armor because you need someone as late game, you buy like 12 pieces of armor, that's 12 different notifications you're gonna get back to back to back that could be in your way of your vision. So that's one thing that I'd like to see them adjust. Another thing, I couldn't tell if it was just my rotations that ended up this way, but I felt like I didn't have access to nearly as many buy stations, but maybe that's just truly in line with the number we've had with Fortune's Keep and Rebirth. I just felt like during my games, I was finding it really hard to find a buy station. When I look back at matches though, and I look at like the TAC map pregame, there are buy stations all around. It's just, I didn't quite ever get around to them. So I don't know if that's like, we're short buy stations by comparison, or again, if it's just the luck of the draw on how rotations work and it was just not working out in my favor. Also, I feel like additionally, Resurgence and the fast-paced respawn nature, I feel like we could benefit from adding more UAVs in, either like adding one or two more to the stock, adding one per player per team per buy station, or just having like them restock every single zone pool. I think that we could absolutely benefit from that because again, you have action, you have the ability to respawn. It's not as detrimental in my opinion to be able to see where players are because if you die, you come back. It's not the end of the world. You're not gonna have one team spamming and ruin your game that you spent 20 minutes for just because they have two UAVs out. And finally, the last thing that isn't quite necessarily nitpicky, but is something we'll see in time, but right now it is kind of just annoying, is that it is quads only. Right now, Resurgence launched with quads, so if you're a solo, duo, or even trio players, you're going to be at a disadvantage if you queue up here for this. Quads, of course, while it is nice and is incredibly chaotic, again, you have four people sometimes shooting at you, that is something that is fun, but there's a lot of people that would prefer solos, duos, or trios. So fingers crossed we see those added in sometime soon here. I would imagine that it's something that they're kind of rolling this out as quads only to make sure that servers don't get overloaded, that they're stable and everything that goes along with that. So I would kind of imagine in the next one, two, three weeks, we see all four of these playlists out there. But for the time being, I still would just like to mention, I'd like to see solos, duos, trios in there as well. Honestly, I'd really like to see Resurgence solos because that was a lot of fun in Rebirth back last year at the end of Warzone 1. I love that. So I'd love to see that again here with that. Overall thoughts though, Honestly, I really enjoyed my first few hours of gameplay. Maybe it's just me being sort of biased because we absolutely fried. Like I'm talking, I was pulling PR numbers in Warzone 2, not really even trying just because we had that resurgence, we had the high action. And truthfully, like I, I don't play Warzone 2 as much as I did with Warzone 1. It was just something that Almazra and the big map VR and the way some of the main fundamental changes, it kind of burned me out on it. But like, I haven't played too much, but I like to think that I'm not a bad player when I do play. And so like playing this, it reminded me, okay, I still got some aim, I still got my gun up. So in that sense, I was really enjoying it. And I think the matches, we had both good and bad matches last night, but truthfully, the ones that were standing out were the ones that were memorable, the really good ones, the 15 to 20 kill wins that we ended up getting here across the board. So I was really happy with how this all turned out for my initial play experience. Again, that is totally subjective. Maybe I'll play tonight and absolutely be miserable. Maybe skill-based matchmaking will absolutely decimate my gameplay, but for the time being, as of recording this, 
I enjoyed my time. So looking forward to jumping back into it. Very much so looking forward to jumping into it into DMZ. As you guys know, big fan of DMZ here, but haven't been able to play just because yesterday we were so inundated with content to make, as well as jumping in and trying out the new features as well within Ashika Island and in MP elsewhere. So wasn't really playing DMZ. Excited to try that out here on Ashika Island as well. But for right now, I enjoyed it. If you guys haven't done so yet, if you were having the crashing issues, jump in, try it out. Hopefully you enjoy it. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down below. Before we wrap everything up, though, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel. Again, Hype Sauce and Starford are two of the tubs that are available for 30% off with code Espresso. Those are two of my favorites. Not even kidding. So, like, it works out perfectly. Check the link in the description below if you guys are at all interested. And, of course, use code Espresso to take advantage of that full 30% off discount. But, again, drop your thoughts below. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. We have a lot upcoming here over this weekend and the next week or two with guides, tutorials, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you stick here on the channel if you guys are at all interested. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.